And now joining me live in the studio is Plus TV news correspondent and presenter Amaka Okoye to analyze the documentary. Amaka, good morning. Good morning, Benio. Thank you for joining me on News on the Hour. Good to be here. Now, I want to ask, starting off first, what informed the information for this doctor, in, in doc documentary? What informed it? All right, so over time, uh, we've heard stories of young girls who have been trafficked, you know, and we have different versions of the story. But then I thought it was important for us to hear from the people, you know, the victims themselves. And yes. so, you know, I went out in search of these people. And thankfully, there were four girls uh, who were trafficked into Libya, and they were happy to tell their story. And you don't want to know how terrifying and horrible an experience it is to, you know, to be deceived into a place when you thought you were going to get, you know, going for greener pastures, as, as it were. Yeah. But you end up, you know, in Libya being forced as a sex a slave, being tortured, being beaten, being raped countless times, it is horrible. Now, um, human trafficking, it's, it's not a new phenomenon in the area where we are, but unfortunately it goes under, grossly underreported. That's correct. Now, during the course of this documentary, what, what was a shocking revelation that you discovered during this documentary? Now, let's, go, let's take a look at data. One of the things I realized is the fact that, first of all, these people, before we get to data, uh, these girls who are being trafficked, particularly we're talking of females here, they are first of all deceived, right? So someone comes and tells you like, oh, I have this job for you, so you're a nurse, and yeah. I think you do well in the US, so I'm going to take you to the US, and then you get a better job. So they deceive them, and then they go, and they find out that, oh, halfway, in fact, they find they're not going anywhere near the US at all. So the first thing is there's deceit, and then again, it's family. Most of the time, uh, times these people who are trafficked, they are deceived into it by family members. If you looked at the, the documentary, the first girl there, um, it was her sister, family, you know, she called her sister, yeah. not blood sister. But it was a family member who linked her to this certain allergy, you know, and all that, and then she ended up in Libya. So that's the major part of it, that these people, they are ignorant. You know, sometimes people say, oh, why are we sorry for them? They knew they were going in for prostitution. No, the case of these four girls, none of them knew they were going for prostitution. They wanted a better life, yes. and they were deceived into it, and they paid for it. In fact, all of them paid nothing less than a million to be able to go. Yeah, so, by the documentary, I, I know, figured, yes. Yeah, so they pay, they even pay for this, but they end up, you know, being in torture homes, they end up in cartels, they end up being raped, they end up being sex slaves. So let me quickly go to the figures okay. and data. Now, um, as of when we did this documentary, which was last year, uh, during the research and inquiry, I realized that the Nigerian Immigration Service says that we have 36,512 migrants who are stranded in Libya and they are all Nigerians. 36,000? Yes, 36,000. These are the ones that are accounted for. So it goes to say that there are others yeah. who are not accounted for. Now, according to the International Organization for Migration, it puts it, the figure as over 60,000 Nigerians who, as of today, are still stranded in, in Libya. Libya. Right. And then finally, the Nigerian Immigration again, the Service, they said no fewer than 10,000 Nigerians die crossing the Mediterranean, Mediterranean or going through the desert. Because as you know, uh, they don't go through the legal process. They don't go through the right way. So first of all, they, go, they move from Lagos to Kano. They board a bus in Kano, and then they end up in another bus and go to Niger. Which know. is the major concern to me? You, you're meant to be traveling outside the country to Europe, and then because you're going you, through Kaduna and You don't Kano. go through airplanes. That, that, that already is a red flag. I mean, and from a few of the documentary I, I saw, I like, couldn't they at that point tell themselves, you know what, I, I want to discontinue this journey? No. Like, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer immediately yes. why they couldn't. First of all, remember, they go for the people who are ignorant, for lack of a better word. It, you know, they say to, like the, one of the girls, she was told, oh, we have to go through Kano Airport. <laughs> Because she asked, oh, but why are we not going through Lagos? If yeah. we're going to the US, why don't you? She says, no, 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 we'll go through Kano Airport. But someone would want to interrogate further. No, why so? And then they collected her passport. And then they said, oh, when we get to Kano, the plane is already there. You know, they, but they realized at that point, your passport is being collected from you. You're with men, four strange men in a car. You can, and this, all of this is happening in the midnight, you know, 1 a.m. So you can't even, you don't even know where you are. They're, They're all about that. 
because they're vulnerable, they are vulnerable yes. at that time. So they, they're just left at the mercy of, well, whatever happens, happens. And, and, and the question, Beg, what, what is our Ministry of Internal Affairs, the government, what are they doing about the supposed Nigerians um, mm. caught in Libya? And now, uh, I will tell you there are some intervention. NAPTIP, of course, you know, they are doing some, some work okay. already going on, but it's not enough. Because during this um, the documentary, part of the things I, re I discovered is CATHRA, there's a, a, it's an organization, an NGO that deals with people who have been trapped in Libya. So they are working in collaboration with NAPTIP to be able to bring some of these girls back. Um, it's a bit difficult because of lack of information, access to information those are some of the challenges that we have currently you know to be able to reach these people but are they doing something yes is it enough no they can do better so they are looking at collaboration between NAPTIB and uh, NGOs like CATHRAF and individuals you know well-meaning Nigerians who will hear something and begin to say you know call home and say oh that, that this group of Nigerians we think are not safe you know and then of course there are others who voluntarily agree to come back and that's the area that IOM is working hugely on you know to say anybody who's willing to come back, we can bring you home if you are willing to come back. Yes. Yeah. Amaka Okuri, thank you very much for joining us on thank News you. on the Hour. Oh, it's good to be here.